What's up guys, Randy with Fix My Heat. Today we're gonna to be talking about hot surface igniters. Chances are if you're watching this video, you're experiencing some symptoms and you need to get this solved quickly, so we'll get right down to it. The symptoms of a broken or malfunctioning hot surface igniter are going to be your burners just simply won't light on your furnace. And you might be getting a error code on your furnace that says something to that effect, ignition failure, failure to ignite, or ignition lockout. So in this video, We'll be covering where that part is located, what exactly it does, and how to diagnose to see if that's the problem. After we find it, test it, and potentially replace it, we'll go over how it works and why it's important. I need to warn you guys, what I'm about to do does involve high voltage power, 120 volts. If you're uncomfortable working on any of this, then I highly recommend calling a professional. No amount of money saved is worth your life. So we're working on this same Armstrong unit that we worked on in the flame sensor video that I made. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out here. The symptoms that we're getting today are the burners just won't seem to light. I've got a call for heat at the thermostat and the furnace will try to run, but the burners never turn on. So we need to figure out why. I'm inclined to think that it's a bad igniter because the burners aren't lighting but I can find out in a number of different ways and we'll go over those right now. The first way to know for sure is you can look inside the burner box and see if the igniter's even glowing. In this case, the igniter glows an orange or a reddish color. That's because the surface of it gets so hot that it starts to emit light. That hot surface is what lights the burners. The gas flowing past it will catch on fire as it passes that glowing hot rod. Our reducer motor starts, our pressure switch closes, hear a click from the circuit board, which should be sending power to our igniter. But the igniter is not glowing. There's our gas valve opening. You can hear gas blowing. But the igniter never glowed, so there was nothing there to light the burners. So we did an ignition failure code on the board. If it does this a few times, it'll give us an ignition lockout. If it's not turning orange, then chances are it's bad. But we can check to make sure it's getting power during the cycle. So the first thing we've got to do is locate the igniter. We see our gas line is coming in right here, and that leads up to this gas valve. This gas valve opens and sends gas to these burners here. Your burner box might be in a different location. Mine's on the top, sometimes they're on the bottom. However, inside of this box is where the ignition takes place, where there's flame back inside of there. So you can see our burners here. I've got three burners, one, two, three. And right in the back there, there's a stick and another stick. If you look under here, you can see on the left, there's one stick and on the right, there's another. Your igniter might look different than mine. Mine has a metal shield around it. And that's this one right here. This guy over here is your flame sensor. If your flames are lighting and then turning back off, that might be your problem. If your flames aren't lighting at all, this might be your problem. So you can see I've got the power wire disconnected here. It's normally plugged into this connection right there. I've got that disconnected and I've set my meter to ohms. Ohms are a measurement of resistance and we're about to test the resistance on this igniter. So I'm just gonna clip that right there so you can see it. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put my two probes, one on each side of this igniter, and we'll ohm it out. And it says we're at about 160 ohms, which is really high. And it's possible that that's the problem. Generally, anything over 100 ohms, I would recommend to a customer to replace their igniter. So. That's one potential issue. Now another thing that we can do is we can take the other side of this and test to see if it's getting power to the igniter. So I'm going to put that meter back in your vision there again. I'm going to take my two probes and I'm going to stick them in right here. And I'm going to change this to volts. Alternating current, volts AC. You can see that little squiggly line on the left there. That means alternating current. I'll turn the power on and we'll see if we get voltage to our igniter. Our 
reducer motor kicked on, got a pressure switch closed. Now the igniter should start to glow, but I've got the plug disconnected with my probes in it. I'm getting 118 volts to that. So the reason that our igniter isn't glowing is because the igniter's bad. I'm getting power to it, and I've got a really high resistance through it. And you can hear now the, the gas valve opened, but obviously the burners did not light because my igniter was disconnected. If you look closely at this igniter, you can see that there's a metal shield but down inside of there, there's a little probe. And that probe conducts electricity. And if that electricity can't flow through there, it won't get hot to light the burners. So we need this to conduct electricity. If it has a high resistance through it, or if your meter says OL, no continuity through it at all, it can cause this to not get hot enough or not glow at all and not light your burners. So I'm going to go ahead and put in this 41-604 Robert Shaw replacement part and once I get this put back in we'll give it another test and see how she runs. So our igniter has been replaced. We've turned the furnace back on. I've got it plugged in. Our inducer motor has started, our exhaust motor. The pressure switch is closed. Let's see if the igniter glows now. Ah, uh, there she is. The igniter glowed, lit the burners. motor should start in 60 to 90 seconds. Now one thing to keep in mind is that igniters aren't universal. An igniter from one furnace won't fit into another furnace. You can see the obvious differences between all of these. And this is just a few of the many different igniters there are in the market. Now all of these are hot surface igniters, so these are the coils that we talked about that conduct electricity and get hot. This one right here has a flame sensor built right into this, the assembly. You can see how specific that one is. That can't be replaced with any of these other ones. This one right here is a single rod that conducts the electricity. Looks a little bit different than these M-shaped ones that we're looking at over here. And if you're not sure what type of igniter you should have, you can look up the model and serial number of your specific furnace and see what the recommended replacement part is for that. If at any point you're uncomfortable with that process, you should reach out to a professional. Let's talk about how the igniter works. So you've got gas and air flowing into your burner here that's mixing up inside of this burner and the gas and air mixed goes across this igniter. This igniter has 120 volts of power on most models. There's a few models out there that use 90 volts or some other strange voltage most furnaces are going to have a 120 volt igniter. That power comes up the line here, goes through the igniter, and the resistance of the igniter causes it to get hot. The resistance of the material it's made out of makes it hard for that power, the electrons, to travel through. So it starts to heat up. That heat starts to actually make it glow and you can see it glowing inside of the burner compartment. That hot surface is now surrounded by extremely flammable gas and air, which the only three things you need to create a fire are fuel, air, and heat. We have all three now. So that gas lights coming out of that burner. Now, if for some reason we don't have voltage going to the igniter, maybe it's not coming from the circuit board, or if we don't have a good neutral wire from the furnace back to the breaker box, or if the igniter has broken, it can no longer conduct that electricity, it won't even glow. 
Additionally, if the resistance gets higher through this coil, through the igniter itself, it can either not get hot enough or get too hot and then crack and not work. So checking the resistance on this is very important and it's normally performed during an annual maintenance. The same principle is how an incandescent light bulb works, or really any light bulb, but an incandescent's the easiest to picture in your mind. You've got power going into the bulb, 120 volts. It goes through this line here and heats up this coil and it starts to glow. And that's how you have light from your light bulb. If that light bulb breaks and that filament in there is bad, then it doesn't light anymore. Also, if you turn off the power switch or somehow cut a wire, the light bulb doesn't work anymore. All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. I hope that you learned something. If you did, hop down in the comments, let us know. Additionally, if you want to add to the conversation, feel free. I'd love to talk to you guys. If you have any questions about HVAC-related stuff, I'd love to answer them. Give me some good video ideas. Uh, ultimately, I'm doing this for you guys. I want to reach as many people as I possibly can. I want to empower you guys to be able to work on your own furnaces, air conditioners, water heaters, all the appliances in your home. Feel confident about it or feel confident about working on your customers' appliances as well. So consider subscribing if you like the content that I'm making. Give me a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And it'll help more people see this content. Additionally, if you know anybody that might be interested in this sort of trade or this field in general, uh, share it with them. I greatly appreciate it. You guys have a great day.